Well, good afternoon, everybody. It's uh, Rob here again. I hope you're all doing well. It is Thursday, the 20th of February, 2025, at um, quarter two, so 20, 20 to three in the afternoon. And I thought I would do a shortish video on probably the most important one calculation that everybody that does heating design should be using every single day. This should be as 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 plain as the you know the hair on the back of your hand you know it's it's uh, it's completely the most important calculation ever to learn it's called a mass flow rate calculation so it's a how to calculate mass flow rate longhand and get this into your heads and then the, in the next video we will start to use the uh, the fabulous IMI hydronics high tools app uh, so you might want to download that before that video so you can you can use it in real time and I'll show you how to set it all up. But it's HYTOOLS, spelled H-Y-T-O-O-L-S. It's a free app. Uh, I still can't, can't quite understand why it's free because it's, uh, it's so versatile, but I guess it is a specification tool for all of the IMI Hydronics products. So this is, a, say, this, this video is probably one of the most important uh, calculations that any uh, heating engineer really needs to know. So if we move forward and start talking about some basic properties, and then we can uh, we can get get cracking on on this. So specific heat capacities is something that we need to understand. And specific heat capacities in in common materials. I mean, we look right the way through this list, and you can see that water requires a very 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 high level of energy in order to um, heat uh, just one kilogram of water. And we'll show you this in a, in a second, but it's, it's, it's basically, if you can look at that, it's, it's about 4,180 joules of energy that it needs to heat one kilogram of water just by one degree. That's an awful lot of energy. It's, it's one of the highest substances known to man to heat, uh, but it also, it, it travels through systems very well. It holds its heat once it's up to temperature, which is why we use it for heating, because it is easy to transport uh, around. They use water to cool nuclear power plants and things like that because it is it's so it takes so much energy to heat it up. So it's a very, very good product uh, for that, or a good substance to use for that. But this is very important to understand the specific heat capacity of water because it is a it is a fundamental part of this, of this uh, longhand calculation. And again, I'm sure many people know this, uh, but uh, there's also many people that don't know this, so this is the reason for these uh, for these videos. So, in water, we have 4,183 joules of energy at 55 degrees, when water is at 55 degrees. Now, why are we using 55 degrees? Well, 55 degrees is the new Part L building regulation for the maximum flow temperature that should come out of your boiler for heating. And the reason that we say that is because not a lot of people seem to understand, but dew point on a, on a central heating boiler, on a gas boiler, is 54 degrees. And what does 54 degrees mean? It means that that's when, the, when if the return temperature coming back to the boiler is at 54 degrees or less, hopefully less, then that is when condensing of the boiler starts. So if you've got a boiler set at 70 per 70 degree flow temperature and it's coming back at 60 degree uh, return temperature, the boiler is not in condensing mode and therefore it's only running at around sort of 70% efficient, if that. And what we want to do is get it right up to around 92, 93% efficient. So this is why lower temperatures are so, so, so important when you're designing. Um, this particular, this is why 55 degrees was was uh, deemed to be the correct maximum flow temperatures, and this is what you should all be thinking of trying to do, uh, especially on combi boilers, uh, that sort of thing, to get it down to get it down to that level. If you've got uh, priority hot water set up on your heating system, then that should automatically ramp up the temperature, so you can get you can do pasteurisation uh, um, cleansing once a week uh, to comply with uh, with ACOP L8, which is Legionella protection on hot water cylinders so that's for stored water but for uh, instantaneous water that doesn't come under a cop l8 so therefore you don't need to, you, you can have it running uh, whatever temperature you like my boiler at home uh, is set at 45 degrees maximum flow temperature i've set all the pump speeds up which we'll come into on later videos but that means my boiler is condensing all the time when you see um, walking down the road and you see some boilers on if they're if they're pumping out plumes and plumes and plumes of, of steam you know, looking like the Queen Mary, um, that boiler is not in condensing mode. That is not condensing. 
the best condensing that you'll see, you can barely see any plume coming out of the system at all. Mine just literally purrs away, and it and it and it you know the fan speed is very very low, so it just sort of just just emits just out, and you can barely see that you can barely see any pluming at all on my boiler because it is in perfect condensing mode, and that is squeezing the maximum amount of energy you can get from a gas boiler, which is around 92% efficiency, or 0.9 COP. So, 4,183 joules of energy to heat just one kilogram of water by one degree C or Kelvin. That's very important to understand. But what we generally use when we're uh, working is we use kilojoules. So instead of the 4,183 joules, obviously there's a uh, thousand joules in a kilojoule, so we don't we convert that to 4.183. Now because we're using the IMI High Tools app, I like to go down this route of four using the 4.183 because as you change water temperature, the specific heat capacity also changes. So the higher the water temperature, the higher the specific heat capacity goes. Now I know a lot of tutors in this, they tend to round that 4.183 up to 4.2, which is fine in domestic uh, heating systems and heating scenarios, it's not a problem. But I have noticed it when you're doing some big commercial projects, which I do, uh, I often find that it can make a difference between using, say, DN100 pipe work and DN125 pipe work if you don't get the specific heat capacity exactly right. It could be the cusp between the two. Now, that could make or break uh, you know, winning a job on a project because the difference in prices of those two pipes is, is horrific. So it's very important just to use it. And because we're using an app and we're using software tools for this, we don't need to worry too much about the mathematics. Uh, in, in, in that sense, but 4.2 obviously makes the maths a lot easier. But for this um, particular uh, tutorial, we're going to do whatever the specific heat capacity tells us, depending on the flow temperature that we are set. So it will always be slightly different, and we'll, we'll play around with this with the calculator in a bit, and we'll show you how to uh, you know, get this to whatever size of, 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 of kilowatt you've got from your heat loss calculation. So. We must always set the desired water temperature first in the IMI app, but we'll come on to that in the next tutorial video on, uh, on, on using the app, and I'll have it live on the screen as we, can, as we can use. So, this is a fundamental tool which you should have either on your phones or in your mind or whatever it is, uh, wherever. This, this image is it's a, it's basically it's an ohms triangle. It's an ohms triangle, and it's laid up with your kilowatts at the top, liters per second down here, which is what that stands for, liters per second. And this one stands for specific heat capacity times your delta T. Specific heat capacity times delta T. Now what this means is that if this is your line of division running right the way through here, and this is your line of multiplication, it means you can get any of these three answers here by using two of the others. So for argument's sake, if we wanted to know the specific heat capacity times delta T figure, we would say kilowatts divided by your liters per second, and that would give you that specific heat capacity times delta T. If we are trying to do pipe sizing, we really need to know what the liters per second is. So, so that's your heat loss calculation, so your kilowatts divided by the specific heat capacity times delta T, and that gives you your liters per second. And again, if we wanted to find the kilowatts, it would be liters per second times your specific heat capacity times delta T, and that will give you, give you your kilowatt output. So this is a really interesting way of calculating these out. And this is, I say, this is the most important calculation which you will use or should use every single day for sizing pipe work, etc. So let's start the calculation and see what we had. So if we remember, we had a total heat loss on our house that hadn't had the um, windows upgraded or hadn't had the roof insulation done of 22.3 kilowatts. So what we want to do is try and find out what 22.3 kilowatts equates to in liters per second. And what you must always try and understand is that kilowatts and flow are joined at the hip. They are representative of each other. Very, very, very important to remember that. So if we had our liters per second, or tried to find our liters per second, we had 22.3 kilowatts. And remember from the previous slide, what we have to do is kilowatts divided by the specific heat capacity times delta T. And these are the two things that will change. Okay, so let's go back 
to that next page. So we had 22.3. We've already said that at 55 degrees, the specific heat capacity is 4.183. And for this particular system, we, had, we were designing it with a delta T of 15. So for argument's sake, if it was uh, a, a 50 degree flow temperature, then it would be coming back at 35 degree return temperature. That's the way that we would do it. Now we know that uh, uh, underfloor heating systems, we know that uh, heat pump systems, they'll run at a delta T of five. We also know that uh, we originally, when we were doing heating system design on low, on low water content boilers, that we had a DT of 20. So it'd be the, the old adage of 70 degree flow temperature, 50 degree return temperature. And we can see that by doing this equation, this gives us 0 0.36 liters per second. Now, let's not take any word for it. Let's have a little look. Now, I use Apple products, and this is the Apple calculator. And again, on your mobile phones or whatever it is, Apple have changed it now. So when you click on the calendar, sorry, the, the calculator down at the bottom here, it gives you the options of whether to have a traditional calculator or a basic calculator, a scientific or programmer, whatever it is. So we want the scientific one for this because it has, let me pull that back up again, um, there, because it has in it these brackets. Now these brackets are called parentheses, but we'll come on to that in a minute and I'll show you. So if we just type this out, this is kind of what we get. So we've got 22.3 divided by, open up your brackets there, and then we've got 4.1833 times your delta T, which we said was 15. Don't forget then to close your brackets, which we've just done there, and then we press equals. And now you can see we've got that 0 0.35, but there's five there, so we round it up to 0 0.36 liters per second. Very, very, very simple to use. It's a really, really good tool to do. But let's play around with it now. So if we um, so if we do it again, but we'll do it this time, we'll do it at uh, delta T 20, so a 70-50 return there. So 22.3 divided by, open up your parenthesis, 4.183, 4.183 times 20 delta T equals, you see we've got 0 0.27 liters per second. So you can you see what's happening there? We've gone from 15 to 20 delta T. The actual flow rate has slowed down. So what we're seeing now is this proportional um, change from flow rate. So if it's a DT20, think about if you're going into a, a, a gas system and you're thinking of upgrading to a heat pump or something along those lines, you're going to have to change that delta T to DT5. And what that literally does from delta T20, it quadruples the flow rate. So it's four times the flow rate. So think about that when we do this. Let's, do, let's just do the maths and we'll see. So this is 0 0.27 liters per second. Okay, if we now go 22.3 divided by, open up your brackets, 4.183 times 5 now, so we're 5 delta T now, which is 4 times the flow rate. Watch what happens now. So you can see now that we are on 1.07 liters per second is the requirement to run through to get 22.3 kilowatts. And then of course we need, then need to start sizing pipe work to that. But that's gonna be for the next uh, video that we're going to be doing. This is so, so, so important to get this. So I want to uh, move on to another slide but we're going to play around with this a little bit more just so everybody can really get up to speed and, and, uh, and uh, use this um, system. So when we're doing this longhand, as we've said, mass flow calculation is always in brackets. These are called parentheses, as we, as we just discussed just a minute ago. And that means you calculate this, this equation separately. We've shown how to do that on the calculator. Uh, right, so if we had 4.183, 4.183 times 15, that's where you get your 62.75. Uh, 
and that is that 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 is that part of the equation. So the inside when it's doing it inside parentheses, when it's doing it inside brackets, what it's doing is it's calculating that in the background. So we can say 62.75 uh, is our figure. We now go to the next slide. You can see that if we take that 22.3 kilowatts and we divide it by 62.75, that also gives us our 0 0.36 liters per second. But this is the longer way of doing it as per the kilowatts divided by specific heat capacity times delta T. So that's the longhand equation of, of getting it right. So this, this applies to absolutely anything that we want to do with any kind of system at all. So if we get rid of this, let's try, let's just say you are a um, commercial installer and you've got a, I don't know, a 600, 600 kilowatt uh, uh, boiler cascade or something which you're trying to calculate the pipe size out for and you need to know what the, the, the litres per second are going to be. So again, it's just a simple issue with a simple um, following of this Ohm's triangle here. Uh, pull up the calculator again. And we can say 600 kilowatts divided by, open up your brackets, your parentheses. And uh, if we're doing it at 55 degrees flow temperature again, it's still going to be 4.183 times. Now, commercial systems, it'll probably be either a delta T15, possibly a 20. But I would say with a 55 degree flow temperature, we'd probably get it down. If we see, let's see if we can get it down. Let's get it down to say a delta T of 10. So it'd be 55 degree flow temperature, 45 degree return temperature, which should be should be okay. That gives us a, that gives us a mean uh, a mean water temperature of 50 degrees in radiators, which is pretty good. So let's just try it by a delta T of 10. Don't forget to close your parentheses. So this is a big system now. And you can see we need 14.34 liters per second running through that pipe work, 14.34 litres per second. And we can play around with this, you can do as many as you, as many as you like. You can see now that if, we, if that system, we wanted to get that low temperature ready, so for argument's sake, we had 600 kilowatts of, of, uh, of heat pumps, that would be, a, that would be a, a, a big project to do. But let's try it at DT5, and we know it's going to be about 28, 28.6 all right, on this, because we're doubling that flow rate by doing, going to, to, from 10 to 5. But let's check it. So we've got 600 kilowatts divided by, open up your parenthesis, 4.183 times 5 delta T this time, don't forget to close the parenthesis, equals, and there you go, 28.68. So we can prove that the maths don't lie. So if you have a system and you're trying to get it low temperature ready, this is the massive, massive consideration that you have to do and use this calculation all the time to ensure that your, pro your project that you're doing, whether the existing pipe work in a system is going to be low temperature ready and it can run at these low DTs, these low delta Ts of five, uh, between difference between flow and return temperature. Very, very, very important to understand this and, and, and play around with it. I would probably replay this video a few times just to get yourself up to speed on using these calculations here, this longhand calculation. It's really, really important to do. So that's it for this little short video. Um, the next video, which I'll, I'll try and record um, sometime over the weekend, I would think something like that. Uh, we're going to start using the IMI app, uh, which does it, which does all of these longhand calculations for you. It's, a, it's, it's an absolutely fabulous bit of kit. Um, and we will um, show you how to set it up properly so it complies with all the SIBSI regs and, uh, and show you how to change all the temperatures and everything. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you don't mind. And um, yeah, I will see you on the next one. Many thanks all. Bye bye.